Hello everyone, and in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to play the trickiest opening in all of chess, the Stafford Gambit. In total, I have a gobber stoppering 13 traps for you today, and yes, the engine is going to scream at you for playing this opening, because objectively, if white knows every single move, they will get a slightly better position, but that is just part of playing such a tricky and trappy gambit like this one. So, to start, the gambit comes after white plays pawn up to e4, reapply, pawn to e5, and now white plays knight to f3 here. Attacking our pawn, very standard, we're not going to defend it, we're going to play knight to f6. The Petrovs or Russian defense counterattacking their pawn, and the most common move for white here is to capture the pawn, and this leads into the Stafford Gambit, but they also have two pretty common sidelines that I also want to cover. The first one is bishop to c4, and this is very common, but it is not very good, because this is a free pawn. We can capture the pawn. Uh, if white does not capture this, I mean, we're just up a pawn here, they pretty much have to capture, and now we play pawn to d5. Attacking the bishop, anchoring our knight, and their bishop is now going to be off of the good diagonal, and after they back up to like b3 here, we already can play an aggressive move, like queen to g5 here, attacking the knight, attacking the g2 pawn, and black already wins like 70% of games in this position, so that just goes to show that white already has to be very careful in this opening. The other side that they can try is knight to c3, and this is a more boring one, this is likely going to lead to the four knights after knight to c6 here, but one thing to note is that if white plays bishop to c4, which is the most common move, you have a nice little trick here with knight takes on e4. It looks a little odd, but the idea here is that after white takes back, we can now play pawn up to d5, and we fork them in the center. And after something like captures, we can recapture our queen, and let's say knight back to c3 attacking our queen, we can simply drop back to d6. These are all the most common moves, and we already have a small advantage here because we just have a pawn in the center, and white simply does not, and development from here is going to be quite easy. So those are the other two sidelines quickly covered, but now let's get into the Stafford Gambit after they capture the pawn on e5. We're going to play the move knight to c6 here attacking their knight in the center, and they pretty much are forced to capture. Uh, their only other move they can try to play is like knight back to f3 here, but after a simple knight takes on e4, we have won the pawn back, and there really is not too much for white here. The best they have is an equal position. So if white is going to try for an advantage, they are going to capture our knight, and important here, we capture back with the d-pawn. Why? To open up our bishop and queen for attacking and development purposes. Remember, this is a gambit. We're trying to develop and attack white as quickly as possible before they get onto their feet. But in the meantime, white's pawn on e4 is attacked. They must do something. They have three main moves they can play here. d3 to protect it, knight to c3 to protect it, or they can be aggressive with e5. To attack our knight, and I'll look at this line first, and what we want to do here about this attack is to move our knight into the center with e4. At first glance, this looks a little odd because the knight isn't really attacking anything, but white's biggest weakness in the Stafford is their f2 pawn slash square because the knight is now attacking it and in pretty much every single line we're gonna go bishop to c5 here and with our knight and bishop oftentimes white is not able to defend it and you can already see here with this trap white's second most common move here is d3 attacking our knight but we're already winning after bishop to c5 now, white's f2 pawn is hit, and they cannot really defend it, and they cannot capture our knight either, because a very common tactic, once again, if you see the queens like this, you have a very nice bishop takes on f2. Uh, if they capture, then the queen is now undefended, we have attracted their king away, and we're just up a queen, we are winning. If they try to stall with king to e2, then simply bishop to g4, skewering, we force them to capture, and now once again, queen takes, and yeah, we're just up a queen, we are completely winning. So because of that, their best try here to get a semi-decent position is bishop to e3 to try and block this attack out, but after captures, 
pawn captures. When the pawn moves away like this, that is our cue for our queen to come all the way in, and white is going to lose material. If they move up, then simply queen f2 is checkmate. That certainly does not work, so they have to play g3 here, and now knight takes, taking advantage of the pin we have here, and after captures, we can capture their rook, and we're just up in exchange here, and after time, we are winning. So that is already a very common trap they can fall for, but their best move here is pawn the d4, just taking a lot of space in the center, and what we're going to do here is immediately attack them with queen over to h4 attacking their f2 pawn because once again that is their biggest weakness uh, once again another nice little trap here if they try g3 to try and just kick our queen out we now win with knight takes on g3 once again that same move attacking their rook and the point here is that they cannot take like this we win the rook and they cannot take like this either because we also win the rook with queen to e for check they simply get forked and after they block we capture we're once again up in exchange with a much better borderline winning position but their best move here is to defend the pawn with queen to f3 or bishop to e3 to defend the pawn like this but they're both going to be very very similar and how we're going to play from this point is to try and go bishop to e6 here and long castle and this idea of going bishop e6 moving our queen out somewhere and long castling is the most basic and most common setup in the stafford that you will go for and let's say they try bishop to d3 here to attack our knight you don't want to drop back to some passive square you want to keep it there with f5 defending the knight uh let's say they capture on passant that is their most common move we can simply recapture with our knight and white really does not have much of an advantage here even though they're up pawn because after something like castles we now have a very nice bishop to d6 attacking their h2 pawn and after they play like g3 to kick our queen out well who is defending this guy Oh yeah, nobody, we can capture, now we're not even down a pawn, and white's advantage has slimmed down to pretty much nothing. So, that is how to tackle the pawn e5 variation in a very uh, tricky way with knight up to e4, but now let's look at another option. Let's say they play knight to c3, developing their knight and defending the pawn in the center, and now we go for the basic Stafford move, bishop to c5. And this is the point where there are a lot of traps here. White's best move is h3, controlling the g4 square. But let me show you all of the traps that they can fall for. First off, d3, very common move, uh, defending the pawn, you know, being very solid. But we now have a very nice knight to g4. Once again, attacking the weak f2 pawn, defended by the bishop. They have no way to defend it, so their only way is to try bishop to e3, and sack a pawn after knight captures, pawn captures, and bishop takes on e3. And here, we just have a nice advantage, because uh, now we've regained the pawn, so material is equal, but now their pawn structure is kind of messed up, because they have no f pawn here. The bishop is controlling them from ever castling longside, which they likely want to do, and we already have a very good position there let's see another try bishop to c4 this one is the most common move here and it does not work for a very fun reason now we have that same move knight to g4 attacking the f2 pawn here uh and their most logical move is just castles right you now defend the pawn and get their king safe all that but we now win with queen into h4 now our queen and knight and bishop are attacking the f2 pawn, but also queen to h2 is threatened with checkmate. So their only real try here to not lose on the spot would be h3 here to attack the knight, but we simply capture on f2. Uh, if they capture, we can simply capture back the queen, we're up in exchange, we have a very good position, and if they instead try to move their queen, like queen to f3 here, and try to not deal with all the discovered check business, this completely loses after knight takes on h3 here, double check, and checkmate is forced after a couple moves, let's say they play king h1, checkmate is now extremely fast, after knight, double check, king moves, and now queen into h1 is simply checkmate. Not too much else to say there. Bishop to c4 certainly does not work at all. Uh, another line they can try is bishop to e2 here. 
just preparing to castle quickly and the line i would recommend here is to play queen into d4 this pretty much gets rid of all of white's advantage we're threatening checkmate so the logical move is to just castle but we are also attacking the e4 pawn and we can quickly regain that with knight takes on e4 now and after something like knight captures queen captures we have regained the pawn if white tries bishop to f3 here to attack the queen very important note you want to control the d4 square still with queen to h4 make sure they can never get the very nice pawn the d4 strike in the center and we'll now go bishop e6 uh here you can either castle short or long depending on how you're feeling and yeah once again you are doing very well there so there are a lot of traps that white can fall for here but their best move is to play h3 cover the g4 square which is in a lot of variations our base of operations very very important so by controlling that that is a very good move and here we're going to keep developing with bishop to e6 we're planning to move our queen up and try to long castle let's say white now plays pawn to d3 we'll move our queen up to d6 d6 because it controls all of these squares so in the event that white castles short you're going to have very fun tactics on that side so let's say white now plays bishop to e2 here and this is a very common trap once again after bishop e2 long castles white pretty much always plays just castles in this position but this actually is a very bad move because bishop takes on h3 here we have won the pawn back if white does not capture i mean we can just drop our bishop back I and mean, yeah we've regained the pawn yada yada but if they do capture then now we win with queen to g3 check very nice tactic they cannot capture because our bishop pins the pawn and after king over we can capture king moves over and there are a few ways to win here but the most decisive one is pawn to h5 simply trying to go knight to g4 and after something like bishop to e3 here our bishop is attacked it doesn't matter just knight to g4 checkmate is threatened and if they try to capture we capture back with the pawn so our rook is opened up and once again some checkmate here is simply unstoppable so there yeah unstoppable checkmate so that is once again how to tackle another variation in this case the knight to c3 line defending the pawn like this but now let's look at what their objectively best option here is pawn the d3 this is also their most common option defending their pawn in a very solid way with another pawn and here we're going to go for that same typical stafford move bishop to c5 attacking the f2 pawn here we have one of the most fun traps in the stafford if they play bishop to g5 here to try and pin our knight to our queen we now win with the incredible knight takes on e4 that is a very nice move point being they cannot take our queen because bishop takes king up bishop g4 is a free piece checkmate on move eight that is very nice and if they instead try to take our knight here we have the same pattern as we saw earlier with bishop takes on f2 once again if they capture we take their queen and they try to move up then bishop to g4 skewering and we get the same pattern as we saw in the other position we're up a queen and we are completely winning so that is a nice trap to keep in mind another trap here is if white tries to move bishop to e3 it looks a little odd because after bishop takes and pawn takes yes white has kind of messed up their pawn structure but they've gotten their pawns in the center now and by removing our bishop it's actually kind of harder for us to attack but let's try to attack their weakness right away with knight to g4 we're attacking their pawn now and they pretty much have to defend it their best try is queen to f3 like this but we're not going to stop the pressure we're gonna play queen to g5 here once again attacking the pawn and once again white has no reason to lose it so the most common move here is king to d2 protecting the pawn like this but we have a very nice move here knight takes on h2 out of nowhere winning the pawn back uh, if they don't capture we're simply going to drop the knight back and we've regained our pawn but if they do capture then now we win with a very nice queen to e5 this is a hard tactic to see a fork of the rook and the pawn on b2 and the other rook in the corner so for something like rook to h5 attacking we can capture and the rook is lost in the corner and that is a very nice way to win a rook or uh, really an exchange on a pawn but we are still winning there one more trap 
if they try pawn to h3 here uh, to once again try and control the g4 square here is a little bit premature because we have the very nice bishop takes on f2 check sacrificing bishop the idea here is that after they capture we now play knight takes an e4 check we once again get the same tactic they cannot capture because then queen takes on d1 if they try to run back to uh, e1 here very common but simply queen to h4 and yeah checkmate is unstoppable on f2 there is no solving that problem so their best try here is king to g1 practically speaking i mean according to the engine their best move is king to f3 Literally nobody's going to play that in a million years, so I'm not going to cover it. Uh, but King G1 is what most people play here, and you could consider it a little bit boring or meek, but the line you want to go for here is Queen to D4 check, King moves over to H2, and now Queen to D6 check, and we're just going to go for a repetition of moves here. Just get that draw. It might not be incredible, but that is something you want to know, because that does lose white all of their advantage. Now, their best move here is bishop to e2, developing and controlling the g4 square, but we're going to make it very clear to them that we are not going to sit back and take this line down. We're going to play pawn to h5 here, lashing out and controlling the g4 square once again. Now, their best move here is c3, and I'll get more into this in just a moment, trying to go d4, but real quick, one very, very fun trap. Let's say white just castles here. You know, extremely common, basic move. We're now going to play knight into g4. Just getting our knight out there and uh, putting pressure on the f2 pawn. If they capture right away, we can simply capture back for the pawn, and now our rook is opened up. That is very, very good for us, and most people here see this and just play h3 because there's no like direct threat that our knight is making but we now win here with queen into d6 we are threatening checkmate and they cannot just capture because we capture back now our rook and our queen go into h2 there is no way to stop checkmate their best try here is likely g3 but we have simply checkmate in one with queen takes on g3 they cannot capture because the bishop pins and yeah that is checkmate very very quickly on the 10th move their best try here which i must say occurs in only like nine percent of games is e5 and white can survive here the idea is we cannot take the queen because now they take and if we just capture back then rook here and we actually get pinned and we are losing so instead what you want to play here after e5 is simply knight captures the pawn and this is pretty much an equal position uh one thing if they try bishop to f4 pinning you have a very nice knight to f3 check and after it captures and queen captures this is an about equal position they can give one check we can simply block then we're going to long castle and you can try moves like g5 and g4 if you want to keep attacking and you are doing quite well there and one more thing also before we move on to the main line is if they play h3 now before castling the move you want to play is queen up to d4 threatening checkmate might look a little odd because white can castle here and protect that but now we drop the queen back to d6 and white pretty much always plays a move c3 here and after knight to g4 this transposes into the other line with the uh, same trap only difference here is that if they play e5 you can't quite capture back because then d4 and we get forked so instead if they play e5 you simply move your queen over to g6 and keep the attack on rolling now finally let's look at their main line option with c3 here this is their best try trying to play d4 here and strike in the center but you're not going to let them have any fun you're going to play the move knight to g4 here once again in the same fashion attacking the f2 pawn but white can just play d4 here attack our bishop and block it out and also they can't really capture our knight because you just capture back and this is just going to lead to a lot of problems for white but d4 here attacking our bishop we're not gonna you know just back up and be passive we're gonna play queen to h4 uh threatening or not not quite threatening checkmate but threatening some nasty checks on f2 that white really does not want to deal with uh, if they capture now you want to capture back with the bishop that way it comes with tempo and they cannot just take our bishop as well so after this they'll likely play g3 attack our queen will drop it back 
once again threatening a nasty check and now they must commonly try f3 here attacking our knight and the move you want to know here is h4 this is ridiculous but the variations here surprisingly favor black the idea is that after they capture our knight we can capture on g4 free now they can't take back because they would lose their rook that is terrible uh but also now the check is once again threatened they have to be very careful white's most common try here is now bishop to e3 to defend this but we're gonna play rook takes on h2 and after rook takes and rook takes look at that after everything we have a pawn and it is about to promote so because of that white will usually play the move king to d2 opening up their queen to see that pawn, at which point our idea here is pretty simple. We're going to go bishop to e6, attempt to long castle, and then our rook is going to come over to, um, what's that, h8, and start trying to help the pawn promote along with our bishops and queen. Also, they cannot capture, because then after long castles, uh, this is, you know, them getting skewered. They can try, like, bishop to uh, d3 here, but then a simple bishop c4, and there is nothing. They are just completely losing there. And also, if they try a uh, bishop to d4 instead, we still win here with rook takes on d4, pawn takes, queen takes on d4, and after, like, king moves, we just win here because now we promote the pawn at the very end of the day. So... Their best try is to block the pawn with queen to h1 here. Uh, try not to let anything happen. We're just going to play bishop back to d6. Uh, protecting the pawn, not letting them capture. If they try e5 here, once again, another trap. This does not work because after captures, captures, we don't take back immediately. We long castle. And after they move over, now we have queen takes, the pawn is protected, and they're going to end up losing a bishop, and here we're going to be winning even like back in this position if they don't make that blunder, we're going to have very good chances because after long castles, our rook is going to get in, like let's say placing random, our rook is going to get in here, protect the pawn, white uh, has a very, very awkward king on d2, and their position is pretty much at a standstill because their queen, the most powerful piece is stuck behind defending a pawn that is going to be very well defended. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have an absolutely fantabulous day, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.